Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. This is actually for the Create a Smile Comeback Blog Hop. And um, so they were on hiatus. We're so happy to have them back because their stamps are so cute. And they are so cute, in fact, that I couldn't make a choice. So I pretty much used everything from the new release. I used the uh, Where Your Heart Is, Cart Full of Treasures, Lights On, and Light Up the Dark. And um, those will be available in their shop and they will be linked in the video below on YouTube as well as on my blog. So if you have been watching my channel, you know I'm pretty much just in this scene set. I, I can't, I cannot get out of the mode of making scenes. And sometimes you just gotta embrace what you're into at the time. So I am. Um, I pre-stamped what I wanted to do and it's kind of like off to the left hand side. And then I am stamping this on Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock. So I stamped that cute little mouse and then I masked him so I could sit, have him sitting on top of the sign. I'm going to mask that as well. Um, as I build up the scene, what you want to do when you're building a scene is stamp what they call front to back. So anything that you want in the front, you stamp first, anything that you want behind you stamp second. So in the, um, light up the dark set there are these cute little I think they're moles um, but they have two little poles to hold a lantern and then this lantern's actually from the lights on set it reminded me very much of a camping lantern and there is a camper this cute little camper in the where your heart is so that's kind of how I got the idea I wanted my mouse to have a significant other so I'm going to use the mirror technique for this. I'm stamping my mouse on clean acetate. I'm going to flip it over and then press that onto my cardstock so it stamps the mirror image of the mouse that is on the sign. So they're kind of like looking at each other because the sentiment that I ended up using is with you everywhere is home. And um, so I thought it would be cute if they had this little mouse camper. Um, I'm also kind of playing around a little bit with directional lighting uh, in this scene because I wanted it to be kind of a nighttime scene. I thought it would be just really cute for them to have like this little camper and their little teeny tiny mice. So the flowers that would be around them would be like huge. Um, so I scammed these flowers out of the cart full of treasures set and I'm just cleaning off the... Um, there's the flowers are actually in pots and I don't want the pots to show so I was cleaning off those with just a baby wipe and then I'm stamping them right next to the camper so it kind of builds a almost like a barrier I removed all of the masking and then I'm going to go in with my um what is this it's an EK success writing pen I filled in those two um, hooks because there's a gap in there for the little moles hands to fit but I didn't need that because mine are going to stand up on their own and then I'm also outlining that mirror image mouse so that it is as bold as all of the other images here once I have that done um, typically when my family goes camping, we have kind of like a, I don't know, like a welcome rug, like where we put all of our chairs and tables and stuff underneath the awning of our camper. And so I wanted them to kind of have the same thing. So I'm just using a T-square ruler to just draw a very simple square. And then for the pattern on it, I'm just going to add some stripes. When you do the stripes, perspective wise it's going to look like they're closer together the further they are away so that is how I drew them as well and then here we go into the Copic coloring so with directional lighting um, I'm gonna color my lights first so I know how bright they're going to be um, in relation to everything else so for these lanterns I just picked um, some brighter yellows and a little bit of orange and a teeny tiny little bit of red um, to give them some depth. So I just did a line down the center and then for the darker colors, the YR04 and the R35, I'm just going to add that kind of to the base where the lights would be the hottest. And then I'm going to start filling in that whole glass orb um, because they would just be full of light. So just blending that out. I did leave a white edge um, on the very edge of the lantern, um, that globe there. Um, and then for the actual lantern, I decided to color them black and I'm going to do that with my cool grays. So I'm basically going to fill in everything but the edge 
the edges that face the light. So the lantern has the two pieces that come down on the side. The light would definitely, definitely be touching those for sure. Um, so I left that area in the middle kind of blank. I am going to add just a line of color to the outside edge um, because it wouldn't be as bright. And then the same thing with the, um, the two bottom pieces. So they're stacked um, in order to make them look 3D. I'm adding shading to the bottom of each of them but I'm leaving that top edge light right now so that I can put the yellow there. I'm going to um, go all the way out to black because I want them to look black. And then as I work my way back in, I'm going to add just a little bit more of the darker color so that um, the highlight is not as wide, I guess. Uh, there isn't a lot of real estate here. I don't necessarily know that I needed to use as many colors as I did, but because that's what I'm used to, that was just kind of what I did. Um, the yellow, this YO2, is pretty much going to be all of the light that I use in the entire card. I felt like the highlight was a little too bright, so I went in with a C5 and added that there. I also did the other lantern. I figured you didn't need to watch it twice because there's quite a bit um, <laughs> quite a bit to see in this card. I picked a W5 to fill in the background behind my camper just for the um, wooded area and I just filled that whole thing in with a W5. And then I picked a couple of darker greens, blue greens to just put in really some general shapes. So I'm just drawing some very rudimentary <laughs> very generic pine trees in the background there. Um, and it's just to complete the scene, basically. This isn't anything that I want anybody focusing on, clearly. Look at those trees. Um, but it does add to the overall feel of the scene. I'm going to go in with a slightly darker BG, I think this is a 99, and just do a couple of little... Um, it's not even really detailed because it is so vague back there, but um, just a couple of little strokes so there's some color variation. For another version of trees, I went in with a um, little bit more blue-green, and here I'm just using the side of the marker to create kind of some leaves. It reminds me very much of that scene, I don't know if you've ever seen this um, stepmom, where she's teaching her stepdaughter how to paint trees and she's like swish, 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 make the noise, it helps. Um, sad movie if you've ever seen that. But um, So that's basically what I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing. I'm making the little swishy noises and uh, just filling those in. Again, everything back here, very desaturated, very kind of just vague, it's a suggestion of trees. Once we get everything else colored, you really aren't even going to notice. Going to go in and add some um, tree stems, trunks with this W7. I will tell you, after it was all said and done, and this is the first time that I ever made this card, I was kind of just making it up as I went. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it because I had these two lights. So I had two lights um, that were going to be changing directions or coming from two different directions. So like I said, making this up as I go, um, I would have gone darker in the background. Right now it looks really dark, but once we start adding the other color, um, it just, it didn't look dark enough. So in hindsight, I definitely would have went darker. I'm going to color the camper now, and I find it easier if I put down my yellow first, so where the light is going to cast onto these objects, and then... Um, blend out from there. So I wanted the camper to be white-ish, uh, white-ish, so I'm using some W7s, or I'm sorry, some Ws, um, just warm grays, and they are um, one, three, five, I don't even think I went all the way out to a seven, but when I was grabbing them I didn't pay any attention and I grabbed the five before I grabbed the three. It's not really that big of a deal. I just made sure I kept the con the color concentrated in the center and then blended it out with the W3. Um, that happens sometimes when you're just like in the mode and you're just going. I, I didn't look. I just didn't. So thankfully it wasn't like a completely wrong color. Um, it was just a little bit darker than I had anticipated. So blending that W1 out into the yellow. And right now things are going to kind of look silly. Um, 
but as the scene comes together, it will make more sense. I wanted to add um, a little light just inside their camper, so I'm using the same yellows that I used for the lanterns, but I didn't go all the way out to the red. I just used the Y38 and then um, called it. So for the accents on my camper, they're going to be red, and they're... I... I was very, very finicky with this door. Um, and oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is in the the little intro there where I show you the colors that I use, it says RV29. Um, that is what I grabbed because I typically use an R29 and I wasn't paying attention. So I did end up switching out and grabbing the R29. I just forgot that that part was in there like when I showed you the markers and it wouldn't change it. So I didn't use the RV, though I have to tell you I have the hex chart, and I probably could have because they are almost exactly the same color. Those were like two markers. I probably didn't need to buy both of them, but I didn't know it at the time. So I am blending out this door. I'm leaving the light on the left-hand side, but I'm also adding a little bit of a shadow because if a door is inset, then there's going to be a shadow on the left as well as the right. It, the light isn't going to hit the door directly at the um, directly where it starts on the left-hand side. Now, I didn't love the shading on the door, and I'm going to go back to it. Uh, but moving on to the curtains in the meantime, for the curtains, I didn't do um, anything really spectacular. They are mostly dark because there is that light coming through the window. The curtains really would be more silhouetted. So I'm leaving a lighter edge um, on the edge that is closest to the light, but really the rest of it is just dark. Um, I also am going to show you um, the flowers. I'm not going to show you all the flowers because, like I said, this is already long enough. Um, I filled it in with the R35. I, I skipped the um, R32 altogether because these are... It's a nighttime scene. They're going to be darker. I went in with... Um, this is before I realized it was the RV. Uh, I went in with that um, mid-tone, and then I'm going to go in with the R59. I'm going to add the majority of this is going to be the R59 because it is darker. I'm going to take that YO2, and because lighter colors will lift to darker colors, I can put that just on the edges of the petals. And then I did that for all of the flowers. I will continue to do that for all of the flowers, but I'm not going to show you each ones. For the rug welcome mat, whatever you want to call it, I opted to go with some navies. I thought that that would be um, kind of a cute little setup, the red, white, and blue. Um, and they're complementary to each other, so that's always nice. For this, because we have lights that are in two different directions, so light coming from the left and light coming from the right, the darkest part of this is actually going to be in the center. The only exception to that is behind the wheel because that wheel would block the lantern light. So it would be darker right up against the wheel, but the one in the center is going to have light from both directions, and so it will be darkest at its center point where there is no light. So took that to the darkest color, and then originally I left the edges white. I went in and filled that in with the, the yellow um, I'm going to go back and change that later on. It just felt like it was too bright. I felt like you'd be able to see some of the blue. So we're going to do the second part of the rug, which is going to be the white stripes, and we're going to do them the same way. Um, so we're adding, when you're coloring anything white, you just want to add the shadows. So the shadows are going to be mostly in the center for this particular rug. So that's where I'm adding those two, just out from the center, doing those... Um, using the tip of my marker, using just very light flicking motions. Um, and like I said, when you're looking at it at first, and I think that sometimes that's the hang-up people have when they do scenes, um, it does look kind of funny, and it doesn't look like it makes a whole lot of sense. Like, why would you have these yellow edges on this carpet? Um, it looks uh, just kind of nonsensical but it will make sense as the scene comes together. So you just got to keep that big picture in mind. Going to use the C1 to blend that into the yellow. And then I'm also going to go in with this YO2. Because that light in the camper is so strong, it would cast light outside of itself. So I'm just generally, I mean, very general, following the shape of what the window looks like and filling in that yellow spot on the rug. 
then I'm going to go back to the camper. I'm going to do the tires. So I try to, I try not to jump around too much from colors to colors, but when you don't know what you're doing, which in this case I did not, I was just kind of going with the flow, um, it, sometimes it's hard. So for the tire here, it's going to be black. I'm going to use basically the same color combination that I used for the lantern. And with the way that the light's coming in, it's coming in from the right hand side. So you're going to have a highlight on the right edge and you're going to have a highlight on the left hand side of the tire but on the inside edge if that makes sense looking at it because those are the two things that are going to stick out and the light is going to catch those so when i originally did this i did not color the tire in completely black later on i'm going to change my mind again like <laughs> making these cards is such a fluid thing and um, i just make adjustments as i go especially when I don't really have a game plan going in and I'm doing something that I've done for the very first time. So here I've picked some um, Y greens, uh, y, y greens, seriously, Kelly? Yellow greens or YGs, which, whichever, but the combination would be Y green. <laughs> anyway, I picked some of those in the 90 family because they are a bit darker. I filled in all of the grass area and then I'm going to go in using the tip of my marker and some flicking motions to fill in the grasses. Now the lightest part is going to be like an oval area that's underneath the light. That's going to be the lightest part and I'm only using the YG95 there at this point. Once I was happy with the way that looked, I'm going to go in with the YG, what is this, 97? And that I added toward the flowers along the left hand side and then out into the front. So I didn't really go into that oval too much, just enough for it to blend. Now onto the YG99, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm adding them back by the flowers where it's furthest away from the light, kind of along the left-hand side, filling in that area underneath the camper where you wouldn't see any detail at all, and then bringing this again more toward the front where the light isn't shining as strong and then definitely in the center where um, kind of like the same area that we're putting the darkness in on the rug um, that would definitely be darker the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add some w7 now this might seem like kind of a strange um, combination but because they are a on the warmer side they actually work really well so i'm flicking the color up from the edge of the card in the very front because that would be the furthest point from the light so i'm just kind of flicking it up there you can still see some of the detail that i put underneath it but um not particularly well and that's totally okay that's what we want so i'm adding this w7 to the darkest areas then i'm going to work in reverse so from that w7 to the 99 and again i'm going to flick some of that color up into the darker areas where you wouldn't see as much detail and then also I'm going to flick it down from back by those flowers. And I will go back in and do some more of those kind of flicking grass blade strokes so that everything blends very nicely. Also bringing in back in that 97 and then again the 95. I'm also going to add some yellow to just underneath that lantern. And so now you can start to see kind of how our scene's coming together. I felt like the blue, um, you would see some of the blue. The blue, the yellow on that welcome mat would not be as bright as it is on the white. So that's why I went back in and added the blue. For the flowers up front, there isn't really going to be much of a highlight at all because they're backlit. So I really didn't do much to them, but just add some darkness to the bottom. At this point, I wanted to color my mice, but I realized that because I added so much of that blue, it kind of bled into his little ear. And so I just went in with my colorless blender to clean that up. No big deal. Nobody's going to know. This, for this little mouse, he's going to, well, they're both going to be um, a C5. And you'll see I'm leaving that white border around him because he is up in the air. Um he's definitely going to catch some of the light from both sides. He's so, um, he's tall. And so it's going to be easier for that light to get to him. I did use a C7 to color in the center of his body. I didn't completely cover up the C5. 
And then I also used um, a C3, I think, to just blend that out a little bit, still leaving that edge. And then with that, um, YO2 is what I'm going to fill the edge in with, so it looks like he's getting light from both sides. I'm going to color this um, his little ear with the R32 and then blend that back out with a C1 because it wouldn't be a bright pink. Remember, he's backlit. There's lights behind him. I colored his little mouse partner the same exact way. I pulled out an E59 to do the center of these flowers in the background, um, which is a, a, it's a pretty dark brown, but they're pretty dark flowers. There's, there's not a lot of light getting back in there. I picked up the rest of the E's, uh, E55, 57, and 59 to go ahead and do the sign that's in the front. And again, these are backlit, so the majority of our shading is going to be in the center. I'm going to fill in the whole thing with the um, E55. And then when I start adding my shading, I'm just going to add kind of a rectangle inside of the sign, and I'm only going to add the darker shading to the right-hand side of the post. The reason that is is because the sign is actually closer to the left-hand side, so it's really not going to be getting any light on the bottom from the light on the right, but because the sign is taller, it will get some light from the light on the right. Say that three times fast, the light on the right. Uh, anyway, so once I was happy with that, I blended it back out, and then we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. I'm going to bring in that YO2 and add that so there's some yellow light that's cast onto that sign and then onto the post, but only on the left-hand side. So here, I mean, we're basically, I'm going to color the other flowers um, orange, I used the same colors that I had already used, and this is where I decided I didn't really love the wheel. So I went back in and added some darker colors. Now, I didn't take the highlight out. I just made the other areas a little bit darker because wheels are traditionally black. They're not usually that lightish gray color that I had going on there. I'm also going to add a little bit of shading to the, um, I'm going to call it a hook. I, there's a word for it. My husband's going to be extremely disappointed. I can't remember what it is. But the the hookup for the the vehicle i'm going to go in with a white gel pen and add some highlights so where that light would hit the lantern um, because it's so close there would definitely be strong highlights there and then i'm also going to add in um, some details just because i really can't leave anything alone basically <laughs> so i made the curtains polka dots i added some highlights to those tires um i'm trying to think what else i do oh i added a couple little uh flowery um, branches in the amongst the flowers just little white dots to bring in a little bit of brightness added a highlight to the hook thing I can't remember the name of and um, yeah that's so pretty much all I did with the white gel pen now if you've been here before you know I outline all of my images this is an EK success writing pen which is Copic safe so I'm gonna outline all of my images all of them, yes, the whole scene, I have a real problem, but I like the way it looks, so got to do what you got to do. For the sentiment, I am actually going to heat emboss this. Um, so I'm lining it up in my mini Misty, and then I'm going to do it in white embossing powder. So I'm going to use my EK6, no, Ink and do that's what it is. It's an Ink and do Ecadu uh, embossing buddy. So I'm going to prep that area. I'm going to use Versamark ink to stamp my sentiment in. And this was just... I could have done it in black, but it would have been really, really hard to read, and I wanted it to kind of stand out. That's why I chose to do the white heat embossing. Um, I just think it's such a cute little sentiment. It says, with you everywhere is home. I thought it was kind of fitting with the little the little camper scene. Um, so I'm just going to heat set that. Now, I, I did have my gun running beforehand, so I would have minimal warping on my paper, but I'm going to heat set that until it is all glossy and smooth. And then I'm going to add some clear wink Estella basically to everywhere the light touches, which distinctly reminds me of the Lion King PPS. So that's it. That's the whole card. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you're interested in another scene card, today I actually have another video up on the Simon Says Stamp blog um, that is a summer scene. So you can go check that out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.